In this video, we're going to take a look at the 6th JWT lab from Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via KID Header Path Traversal. In the first video, we went through an introduction into JWT attacks and covered the background information that's available on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, as well as some of the tools that we can use to work with JWTs like JWT.io and Cyberchef, Python libraries, Burp Suite extensions, and the JWT tool. So we're not going to go through that stuff again, but we will go through the background information that's specific to this lab. According to JWS specification, only the ALG header parameter is mandatory. In practice, however, JWT headers, also known as Joe's headers, often contain several other parameters. The following of particular interest to attackers. JWK, which is a JSON web key, provides an embedded JSON object representing the key. The JKU, which is a JSON web key set URL, provides a URL from which the service can fetch a set of keys containing the correct key. The KID is the key ID, and it provides an ID that servers can use to identify the correct key in cases where there are multiple keys to choose from. Depending on the format of the key, this may have a matching KID parameter. As you can see, these user controllable parameters each tell the recipient server which key to use when verifying the signature. In this section, we'll learn how to exploit these parameters to inject modified JWTs signed using your own arbitrary key rather than the server's secret. Servers may use several cryptographic keys for signing different kinds of data, not just JWTs. For this reason, the header of a JWT may contain a key ID parameter, which helps the server identify which key to use when verifying the signature. Verification keys are often stored as a JWK set. In this case, the server may simply look for the JWK with the same KID as the token. However, the JWS specification doesn't define a concrete structure for this ID. It's just an arbitrary string of the developer's choosing. For example, they may use the KID parameter to point to a particular entry in a database or even the name of a file. If this parameter is also vulnerable to directory traversal, an attacker could potentially force a server to use an arbitrary file from the file system. This is especially dangerous if the server also supports JWTs signed using a symmetric algorithm. In this case, an attacker could potentially point the KID parameter to a predictable static file and then sign the JWT using a secret that matches the contents of this file. You could theoretically do this with any file, but one of the simplest methods to use is dev null, which is present on most Linux systems. Since this is an empty file, reading it returns an empty string, therefore signing the token with an empty string will result in a valid signature. And we have an example here, so here's the KID, it's just got some directory traversals, it's going back two directories, and then the path to the file. If you know a file that's on the system and you know what the contents are, you can just replicate that on your own system and use that to sign the key, and then you'll use the KID to point the key ID to that file on the victim system. So it's both being signed and verified with the same predictable key. Obviously, dev null is a good one because we know that we just need to sign it with an empty key. But if you knew the contents of another file in the system, you could also use that. There's a note here that if you're using the JWT editor extension, it doesn't allow you to sign tokens with an empty string. However, due to a bug with the extension, you can get around this using a base64 encoded null byte. And we've got the lab here, but since this is the last lab in this JWT section, there is another section with a couple of expert labs. We'll also go over some of the other theory in this section because we won't be going back over that again. So there's a note here that if the server stores its verification keys in a database, the KID header parameter is also a potential vector for SQL injection attacks. Some other interesting JWT header parameters include CTY, which is content type, and this can sometimes be used to declare a media type for content in a JWT payload. This is usually omitted from the header, but the underlying parsing library may support it anyway. So if you found a way to bypass signature verification, you can try to inject a CTY header and change the content type to text slash XML or application X Java serialized object, which can potentially enable new vectors for XML external entity injection and deserialization attacks. You also have the X5C header parameter, which is sometimes used to pass an X509 public key certificate or the certificate chain of the key used to digitally sign the JWT. This header parameter can be used to inject self-signed certificates, similar to how we used JWK header injection attacks earlier. Due to the complexity of the X509 format and its extensions, parsing these certificates can introduce vulnerabilities. Details of these attacks are beyond the scope of these materials, but for more details, check out. And then we've got two CVEs to check out. And then we also have this section on JWT algorithm confusion. That's where we have two expert labs. So we will move on to that section 
shortly, but let's go back and solve this lab. So the description says, this lab uses a JWT based mechanism for handling sessions. In order to verify the signature, the server uses a KID parameter in the JWT header to fetch the relevant key from its file system. To solve the lab, forge a JWT that gives you access to the admin panel at slash admin and then delete the user Carlos. And we've been given credentials to log in again with, so let me just open up the lab and we'll go and log in. So we'll go to my accounts and log in as Wiener with the password Peter. We can open up the developer tools with F12 and grab a copy of our JWT. And then we can go to jwt.io, paste this in, just see what we've got. We've got this KID parameter, which is just set to some hex values at the moment, the algorithm. And then as usual, we've got the same payload. We need to change this sub from Wiener to administrator. As usual, if we do that, we're gonna mess up this signature. So we wanna try and point this KID to a file which is predictable, which we know the value of, for example, dev null. And then we want to modify the token and sign it with that same secret, in this case, null. So as usual, we're gonna solve this with a Python script to begin with. I've already got this open at the moment, demo.py, and I'm gonna paste in our JWT to begin with. The script is gonna decode the token, it's gonna update the claim for sub, change that from wiener to administrator, and then we just need to re-encode it. So to do that, we're just re-encoding our same token with the algorithm HS256, and we've got a secret of null, so that's just set to an empty string. And then our headers, we're updating the KID, we want that to be dev null. I just used three dot dot slashes here, maybe it'll depend from system to system, maybe two would have worked fine as well, but this should work for us now. So that's it, let's just run the demo script. And we see our original token, we see the updated token, and then we see our modified token. And we can take a copy of this, go to jwt.io, make sure it's all looking good, it is, we've got dev null there. And what about if we go to our lab and just update the token here? Refresh the page and look, we've got access to this admin panel where we can go and delete the user Carlos. However, we don't want to do that just yet. We actually want to go and try and get this working with Burp Suite and then we'll do the same with the JWT tool as well. So I'm going to go and set the cookie back to our original one and refresh the page. Close this down. Let's go to Burp Suite. Maximize the window. We'll take a copy of the My Account request and send it to the repeater. And as usual, we've got a uh, JSON Web Tokens and JSON Web Token extension. So I tried a few things here. I don't think this one actually worked for me. Let me change this to dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dev null. And then we'll change this to administrator. And in here, what I would have thought we should be able to do is either set the secret, let's load secret or key from file, and then let's just go to dev null open. So it's kind of hoping that would be all we need to do here. Let me try and do send, but it takes us to a login. And if we follow the redirection, it's just a login page. It doesn't have admin or anything. So let's go back and let me try recalculate signature. No, no, no. Okay, so we don't really have any other options there. We can only load the secret from a file. There doesn't seem to be any option to enter in a password. So let's try the other extension. So we've got all of our correct information in here. Let's go to sign. And it says no signing keys have been added. So this is where we go to our JWT editors keys. And we can do a new symmetric key, generate. And I think this is where we need to set the K to be a null byte. Remember it said that we can use a base64 encoded null byte. So I'm going to go to Cyberchef. And in here, I'm going to do a null byte. I'm going to convert it from hex. And then I'm going to base64 encode it. There we go. We can take a copy of that. We can go back here and let's try and put this in here. Okay. That looks good. Let's go back to our repeater. That also looks good, although did I need to update the key ID there? Let's find out. We'll go sign, say don't modify anything. By saying don't modify anything, it hasn't updated our KID with the KID that was generated. So hopefully that's not an issue. Let's click on send. The problem is it's just going through to login still. So can I go back? Let me go back here. Let's just send this directly to admin. 
Go send unauthorized. Okay, let me go to our JSON web token. This should be okay. Sign send 200 okay. And look, we've got through to the admin page and we've got the option to delete the Carlos user. Let's just try one more time here as well. If I go and do this again, dev null. Maybe if I tick this box, no, there isn't a box to tick. Okay, send. Okay, that does have the option to delete, but I'm not sure whether it's just still using our previous token that we just generated here. If anybody else has a play around with these two extensions, you can let me know. It's quite funny that throughout the labs we've been doing, it seems like for each lab, only one of the two extensions will actually work. But anyway, that's how we can solve it with Burp Suite. Let's go and take a look at the JWT tool. So as always with the JWT tool, we can do this with a few different methods. There's a dash T option, capital T for tamper, where you can go through like an interactive wizard. You also have the inject claims option, which is what I used here. So if we just put in the JWT, it just prints out the info. We can do dash H to get up the help options. And there's a couple of things we want to do here. So we can either do this tamper. We can do the inject claims where we specify then values for the header value, the payload value header claims and payload claims, and we also need to set a signing algorithm or use an exploit. In our case, we'll be setting a signing algorithm to HS256, and then we'll also be specifying a secret. In our case, it'll be a password, which is just gonna be an empty string. But you could also, I guess, provide dash K and use the dev null file as well. So let's do this again. Let's just put this all together. We've got capital I for inject claims. We're injecting first the header claim, which is called KID. And we want to change the value to dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dev null. And then we also want to update our payload claim. So we're going to set the payload of sub to a new value of administrator. And then finally, we want to sign it with HS256. And the password we want to use to sign it is just going to be null. There we go, we run through that. We can take a copy of this. We could run it through again if you just want to see how this looks. And it looks good. There's our administrator, there's our KID pointing to dev null. And let's go back and update our cookie. We do that, we refresh the page and we have the admin panel. We can delete the user Carlos and we've solved the lab. Okay, so just a quick recap of this attack. So whenever the server goes to verify the JWT, it essentially looks at this KID header to work out which key is associated with this JWT. And it's if it's looking for a file and we put in dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, it's going back a few directories and then go into a file that we, not that we control, but that we can predict. We know what the value is going to be. And in this case, that's dev null, but it could be something else. And because it's using dev null to verify the signature, that means all we need to do is use devnull to sign the token. Hope that makes sense. Let's go and have a look at some of the mitigations. As I say, we've got to the end of this section now. So we want to go and have a look and see what are some of the ways to secure JWTs. And we've gone through this quite a bit throughout the series. I know at the end of each episode, we kind of talk about some of the mitigations and best practices. But let's just do it as a final wrap up before we move on to the JWT confusion section, which has two expert labs. So here's a few of the procedures that Portswigger recommends for preventing JWT attacks. The first is to use an up-to-date library for handling JWTs and making sure that developers fully understand how it works along with any security implications. Modern libraries make it more difficult for you to inadvertently implement them insecurely, but it isn't foolproof due to inherent flexibility of the related specifications. The second is make sure that you perform robust signature verification on any JWTs you receive and account for edge cases such as JWTs signed with unexpected algorithms. The third is to enforce a strict whitelist of permitted hosts in the JKU header. And the fourth is to make sure you're not vulnerable to path traversal or SQL injection via the KID header parameter. Some best practices that are recommended for JWT handling include always setting an expiration date for any tokens that are issued, Avoid sending tokens in the URL parameters where possible. Include an audience claim or similar to specify the intended recipient of the token and that prevents it from being used on different websites. And enable the issuing server to revoke tokens, for example, on logout. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. We'll be taking a look at those two expert labs on JWTs very shortly. But as usual, let me just encourage you to sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to try and find some JWT vulnerabilities and make some money in the process. 
Bug Bounty is a great way to do that. And if you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks. Thank you.